There's no denying the enormous complexity of developing even a totally mediocre, nay, terrible, video game. It requires potentially hundreds of artists and programmers to collaborate towards a single agreed-upon vision. But for so many reasons, this process can still result in disappointment. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 unbelievable reasons why you can't play these video games. Number 10. Creator Phil Fish got into a Twitter argument with a journalist. Bez 2. One of the landmark releases of the indie game revolution in the early 2010s, Puzzle Platform Affairs, was the ingenious brainchild of designer Phil Fish, who, between the game's success and his appearance in the 2012 documentary Indie Game The Movie, became an overnight poster child for indie gaming. Fish confirmed that Fez 2 was in development during E3 2013, though fan excitement was incredibly short-lived. A mere month later, Fish got into a Twitter argument with gaming journalist Marcus Beer, and out of frustration with the industry's perceived negativity, tweeted that Fez 2 was promptly cancelled and he was leaving games development. Though many initially expected that Fish was speaking in the heat of the moment and would soon return to complete the game, almost eight years later Fez 2 has yet to materialise. Though Fish did eventually return to the industry to work on a number of unrelated games. While Fish perhaps didn't handle himself spectacularly well on social media, his cancellation of a game that would have been a massive commercial success for him speaks to just how frustrated he was with the state of the games industry. Number 9. Nobody checked with Nintendo until the last minute. GoldenEye 007 Remaster Back in 2008, Rare spent many months working on a remaster of their iconic N64 FPS hit GoldenEye 007, planning to release it on the Xbox 360's Xbox Live Arcade. Though Rare hadn't yet secured permission from Nintendo to complete the port, they nevertheless forged ahead with development, assuming they wouldn't object to one of the N64's most beloved games getting a shiny update. Sadly, with the game close to gold status and only bug testing left to be completed, it became clear that Nintendo still hadn't given the sign-off, and negotiations subsequently fell through. The only solace is that at the start of this year, a playthrough of the remaster was live-streamed to YouTube, showcasing superior graphics and a buttery smooth 60fps. It wasn't long before a leaked ROM of the prototype also made its way online. Though for anyone actually wanting to play the genuine article legally, you're still very much out of luck. Number 8. Sega wanted to make Aliens Colonial Marines instead. Aliens Crucible on paper, Aliens Crucible had the potential to be one of the greatest video games ever based on a movie. Developed by the excellent Obsidian Entertainment, who made Fallout New Vegas, this RPG centered around James Cameron's Aliens was announced in 2006. It'd feature a group of survivors fending off a xenomorph infestation inside a huge space colony. Crucible would also include character customization, permadeath, limited resources, and the ability for players to choose what to do with face-hugged teammates. Writer Chris Avalon called it basically Mass Effect, but more terrifying, and confirmed it was also intended to have links to Ridley Scott's Prometheus. Development was paused when Rebellion's Aliens vs Predator game was announced in early 2009, and a few months later Crucible was officially cancelled, apparently a result of Sega wanting to quote, carefully consider the type of game they want to release. Sega instead pivoted to prioritize development on an Aliens game, which was announced shortly after Crucible, the ill-fated Aliens Colonial Marines, which damn near killed the Alien video game brand if not for Alien Isolation coming to the rescue the very next year. Neat footage was leaked many years ago, but we never got the real deal. The fact that an awesome-looking Aliens RPG died so Colonial Marines could live will never not hurt. Number 7. It was incorporated into the original game, Among Us 2. This is a rare case of a cancellation that didn't piss everyone off, even though it remains no less bizarre as a result. Among Us may have been one of 2020's big success stories, but the game was actually released back in 2018, to relatively little fervor, only becoming a global hit when it was live-streamed by numerous prominent streamers in mid-2020. Last August, developers Inner Sloth responded by announcing a sequel, yet barely a month later they swiftly cancelled Among Us 2, deciding instead to roll planned features into the existing existing game. Though this required the developers to extensively rework the original game's code, it was probably the right decision all in all, given that by November 2020, Among Us had almost half a billion players to its name. A sequel would have risked fragmenting the player base and creating haves and have-nots, so keeping everyone funneled into the same ecosystem made total commercial sense. On top of that, giving players the sequel's planned features as free updates for the original game is as pro-consumer as it gets. 
Number 6. The failure of Hayes destroyed publisher confidence. Time Splitters 4. Despite the fact that Time Splitters Future Perfect released 16 years ago, fans are still passionately rattling the cages for a fourth game, which was tacitly confirmed to be in development back in 2007. But by the end of 2008, the studio was left bankrupt due to the failure of their blockbuster FPS Haze, until they were acquired by Crytek and Time Splitters 4 was quote, put on hold. In recent years, Free Radical's boss Carl Hilton opened up about the company's attempts to shop the property around to other publishers, all of which passed on a fourth time splitters due to Hayes' failure. He said, Publishers would ask what happened with Hayes. We were the company that made a series of high-rated shooters and then we'd released Hayes, which wasn't as well received. This worried them. The fact that no publisher has dared pull the trigger on a sequel to one of the most beloved shooter franchises of all time in almost two decades is just baffling. There are periodic rumblings that a new game might be on the cards, but it's best to expect nothing until an official announcement is made. And even then, probably save the champagne and confetti for the day you're actually playing it. Number 5. EA thought it would harm their image. Thrill Kill. If you were a teenage boy in the late 90s, you were probably pretty hype about Thrill Kill, the ultra-violent PS1 beat-em-up developed as a gnarly spiritual successor to Mortal Kombat, with up to four players battling on screen at once. When development was effectively finished and sequel plans were already being hammered out, publisher Virgin Interactive's North American branch was acquired by EA, and mere weeks away from Thrill Kill's release, EA decided the PR headache the game would cause simply wasn't worth it. And so Thrill Kill was scrapped at the 11th hour, because EA didn't want to address why they were selling a game featuring brutal murder, BDSM, and bodily dismemberment. If you had a chipped PS1 back then though, as so many of us did, pirate copies of Thrill Kill were soon enough posted online, confirming it to be as nauseatingly over the top as the hype suggested, if also a little rough around the edges. Its legacy today is as a cult relic, with its engine eventually repurposed for games such as Wu-Tang, Shaolin Style, and X-Men Mutant Academy. Sadly though, EA's reactionary hand-wringing meant more straight-laced players never got the chance to play it for themselves. Almost 25 years on, some are still holding out hope that it might one day get an official retail release. Number 4. The prototype was rejected, despite looking awesome. Batman Gotham by Gaslight In 2009 and 2010, Fear developer Day One Studios began work prototyping a video game based on the much-loved DC Comics one-shot Gotham by Gaslight, which depicts a 19th century Batman taking on Jack the Ripper. Day One reportedly tried to work with THQ to publish the game, yet their gameplay prototype was ultimately rejected. Though whether this was by THQ themselves or rights holder Warner Brothers is still unknown. All the same, somebody in charge didn't like the look of the game, which seems preposterous in the light of the incredible prototype video which landed online a few years later. Though an undeniably barebone slice of what the game could become, its moody atmosphere and jaw-droppingly impressive Batman cape physics suggested Day One had a potential winner on their hands here. But because it was never given a chance at life, we'll sadly never know just how great it could have turned out. Number 3. Konami's Fallout with Hideo Kojima – Silent Hills this one never stops being painful. In August 2014, Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro's surprise horror game PT revealed itself to be a playable teaser for a new Norman Reedus starring Silent Hill game they were working on, Silent Hills. Sadly, the house of cards soon collapsed when it was reported the next year that Kojima and his staff would be parting ways with Konami after production on Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain was completed. The exact particulars of this falling out have never been confirmed, though it's been suggested that Konami Konami was frustrated at Kojima's slow progress getting Metal Gear Solid 5 out the door, while Kojima was upset at the game ultimately being released unfinished. Whatever the truth, Konami announced the cancellation of Silent Hills in April 2015, more than four months before Metal Gear Solid 5's release, seemingly confirming the acrimonious nature of the split. Though rumors continue to persist that new Silent Hill games are in development, the fact that we were robbed of a Kojima del Toro entry into the series will forever be one of the industry's all-time most agonizing missed opportunities. It didn't need to be this way. Number 2. Disney shuttered development after buying Star Wars Star Wars 1313 Countless Star Wars games have been binned off over the years, but did any leave fans quite so sore as Star Wars 1313, the Boba Fett starring third-person action-adventure game revealed at E3 2012? Personally, I'd say no. A mesmerizing trailer reveal showed off the game's stunning Uncharted-style gameplay. Though when Disney acquired LucasArts the very next year, Star Wars 1313 was unceremoniously cancelled. 
The reasoning for this was that Lucasfilm was changing its scope to license Star Wars projects out to other companies, rather than producing them in-house in an attempt to reduce liabilities. Despite initially claiming the game could be resurrected, this was quashed when Disney struck a deal with EA to produce Star Wars games. EA then hired Visceral Games to develop their own third-person Star Wars game known as Project Ragtag, with Uncharted creator Amy Hennig even coming aboard as director. But just when fans got their hopes up for a Star Wars game in a similar artistic vein, to 1313, EA shut Visceral down in 2017, effectively cancelling that too. Number 1. It clashed with Nintendo's quote-unquote Code of Honor, Super Mario Spikers. And finally, we have Super Mario Spikers, a project worked on by Next Level Games between 2006 and 2007, as a spiritual successor of sorts to the developer's hit sports title, Mario Strikers Charged. Nintendo responded by allowing Next Level to develop a Mario-themed volleyball game, which they eventually adapted to incorporate elements of wrestling, having previously worked on cancelled wrestling title, WWE Titans, Parts Unknown. Nintendo was initially receptive and released funds to allow the beginnings of development. Though once they saw a pitch and early prototype footage, they hurriedly scrapped the game due to its violent content. According to an anonymous developer, the game was cancelled because it violated Nintendo's internal code of honor. While on one hand the leaked combat animations are relatively strong for a Mario product, did it really merit throwing the entire game out rather than, say, modifying the animations? It's a shame, as Super Mario Spikers truly seemed like one of the more inspired and imaginative Mario spin-offs. And many fans and still hope Nintendo might one day revive it in a more sanitized form. That's it from me. Do let me know down in that comment section if you know of any other unbelievable reasons why you can't play certain video games. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.